Welcome to the William Hill SPFL Scottish Football Roundup. With all the action from the weekend's football in the William Hill Championship, League One and League Two. This week, Ethan Ross's double sees Falkirk topple table topping in United. Kelvy Hearts had the high fives in Dumfries. And Alan Troughton bags his second hat trick of the season. by Tate, challenged by Dempsey, sliding challenge for the second, but Oliver comes away with it, looks for that slide rule pass to Ethan Ross, could be in for Falkirk! Fantastic Falkirk goal, capitalising on a moment of weakness at the back from Air United. Walter thought about the through ball, instead goes wide to Henderson. The winger wants to create a yard of space to send one in, low it comes, chance for Air United to turn, Marco Roos, under a fair amount of pressure from the Air United defence. Oliver though finds Tate, wanted to curl one. Now Ross, nice flick to Nesbitt. Ross again, it's Ethan Ross! Well blocked, Ross! Nick Walsh, ushering him to get on with it. Spencer, might just find Gary Oliver. Chance for Falkirk to go through and potentially grab a second. Oliver slides it for Calvin Miller! Nice pass from Adams, finds Nesbitt who might just feed Calvin Miller. Falkirk tearing forward, Ross in space on the left, Miller does find Ross, wants it on his right, Ethan Ross! 2-0 Falkirk, flowing counter-attacking football from the Bairns. Now here come the honest men down the left-hand side, Marco Roos leading the charge, has Spencer for company, wants it on that right foot, sends it across to Mark McKenzie, thought about the shot, now Spencer. Adams in plenty of space. Chance to shoot for Adams! Not a bad effort from the fullback. Tell you something, it stayed hit anyway. Greenock Morton celebrated their 150th anniversary at home to Wraith Rovers on Saturday, with Niall McGinn going close to getting the game's opening goal. Dylan Easton impressed in last weekend's 1-0 win over Falkirk. He almost gave Wraith the lead at Capilo in spectacular fashion. But it would take until the second half for the deadlock to be broken. 49 minutes gone when a floated cross was turned home by Filip Stuparevic for his first Morton goal. And the home side would make it 2-0 just five minutes later. Owen Moffat with great vision to pick out Michael Garrity, who bore his time and picked his spot. Wraith hadn't given up on salvaging something from the game and pressed hard with Josh Mullen's effort forcing a save from Ryan Mullen. But the points and the celebrations belonged to Greenock Morton. Aki's travelled to Hampden Park, hoping to win back-to-back -back matches for the first time this season. Neat play from the hosts, seeing Cami Kerr go close early on. The away team looked bright throughout the first half. Jamie Barjonas a whisker away from making it 1-0 with this effort. But the best chance of the half would fall to the Spiders. Great work from Henry Fieldson to set up Ryan Duncan, who plays one over the top. Aki's defender Lee Kilday spent three years with Queen's Park and almost came back to haunt his former employers with an audacious overhead kick. But the breakthrough would come just beyond the hour mark. 62 minutes gone when a well-placed cross gave Jack Turner all the time in the world to make it 1-0. Hamilton continued to battle and create opportunities late into the game, with Dara O'Connor going the closest to finding an equalising goal as the points stayed in the south side of Glasgow. Two sides struggling for form faced off in Lanarkshire, with the away team making good headway early on as Aaron Comrie won a 28th minute penalty having been filled by Murray Johnson.
Striker Chris Kane took responsibility and stroked home the spot kick for his first goal of the season. But Airdrie would soon come to life, with the Diamonds almost springing an instant response through the left boot of Adam Frizzell, who wasn't far away. Both sides had their chances in the first period, and Dunfermline could have made it 2-0 before the break, but Kane was denied his second goal after Johnson narrowed the angle. It would take until the 67th minute for the Diamonds to find an equalising goal. A teasing cross from the right, breaking for Mason Hancock, whose stooping header crept beyond Dennis Mehmet for 1-1. It remained tight late into the game, with neither side able to find a match-winning moment as the points were shared equally in Lanarkshire. Partick Thistle started brightly in Saturday's meeting with Livingston at Fort Hill. A snapshot from Harry Milne having to be well held by Jerome Prior in the Livy net. The away team would begin to grow into the game more in the second half. Stephen Kelly going close to what would have been a spectacular opening goal. Thistle talisman Brian Graham is yet to find the net in league action this season. He went close to breaking his duck with this headed effort. Both sides traded blows throughout this encounter. Livingston beginning to create more clear-cut chances late on, with Andy Winter not far away here. But the best chance of the game would come deep into added time. The ball breaking in the thistle box for Livingston's Liam Soule, who was denied only by a crucial header from Lee Ashcroft. Nil-nil at Fort Hill. Here's a look at how things stood in the William Hill Championship after the weekend's football. Falkirk's win over Air United moved the Bairns level on points with the Honest Men. Livingston and Queen's Park made up the rest of the top four places. And Airdrie and Dunfermline remained in 9th and 10th after their draw in Monklands. Queen of the South looked bright in the opening exchanges of this one with Kieran McKechnie missing a huge chance to make it 1-0. Queen's skipper Matty Douglas would have to be careful from the 24-minute mark after he was booked by referee Stephen Kirkland. Kelty have enjoyed a strong start to the season and took the lead in Dumfries in the 26th minute through a cool finish from Ross Cunningham. and the Maroon Machine would be presented with a big chance to make it two on 35 minutes after the home side gave away a penalty kick. A penalty kick which was confidently converted by Cunningham to double his and his side's tally. And things would get even better for Kelty before the break. 41 minutes gone, when Scott Williamson strode into the box and smashed home Kelty's third. After a dismal first period, Queens would start the second in better fettle. Mikey Hewitt pulling a goal back for the home side in the 58th minute. But Kelty would soon kick on again, 63 minutes on the clock, when a corner kick was headed home at the second attempt by Samuel Harding to restore the three goal advantage. And Queen of the South's bad day would get even worse soon enough, when Captain Douglas was given his marching orders for a second yellow card in 67 minutes. Kelty looked unplayable at times on Saturday and made it 5-1 in the 70th minute when Williamson poked home his second of the game. A huge result for the team from Fife who surged to the top of the league table. The 
the Warriors travel to the Rock for this League One encounter and would be given an opportunity to take the lead just 11 minutes in as referee Stephen McLean awarded the away team a penalty kick. A spot kick which was taken and dispatched by Blair Alston for his fifth Stainers near goal. The away team looked sharp at the rock and went close to making it 2-0 from a corner kick, but Gregor Buchanan's header was blocked on the line by the Suns' defence. But the Warriors would profit from a similar situation in the 35th minute. Another corner kick, this time turned home by striker Matty Aitken. Dumbarton though would begin to come to life towards the tail end of the half. Neat play from Craig McGuffey, eventually leading to a header from Carlo Pignatiello, who pulled one back on 42 minutes. The second half would see Stenhouse Muir regain control, with good play from Muir O'Reilly in the 52nd minute, leading to a booking for Cammy Clark. The Warriors would pile on the pressure throughout the half, Alston almost grabbing his second of the game, but kept out by a sharp Brettman save. And things would become even more tricky for Dumbarton in the 70 minute mark, when Clark was sent off for his second bookable offence. And Stenhouse Muir would take full advantage of the man advantage in the 80th minute, when a corner kick was worked to Aitken in the box, who made it 3-1. An excellent away display from the team from FK5. On a run of nine unbeaten in all competitions, Alwa welcomed Cove to the Rex, with Stefan Skugel inches away from giving the Wasps the lead. Cove though looked sharp throughout this one and almost made it 1-0 in their own right when Fraser Fivey was kept out by the post. But the away team wouldn't be denied for too long. 16 minutes gone when Connor Scully's curling effort beat PJ Morrison for 1 0. And the team from Aberdeen would quickly hammer home the advantage as midfielder 5A made it 2 0 with a header in the 24th minute. was looking like a tough afternoon for Alawa, one which became even tougher in the 37th minute when Luke Donnelly was shown a straight red card for a foul on Mitch Meganson. The second half would see Cove continue to dominate proceedings but struggle to create as many clear-cut chances as it ended 2-0 at the Indadrill Stadium. The Galabankis hoped to pick up their first league win since early August when they welcomed Montrose, with Tommy Goss seeing a good chance go begging early on. It took just 27 minutes for the opening goal to arrive, and what a goal it was. Rhys Breen seeing an opportunity and taking it with both hands. An incredible strike and an early contender for goal of the season. Annan would continue to impress throughout the first period. Midfielder Josh Todd testing the resolve of Montrose keeper Cammy Gill. Things would continue in a similar vein throughout the second half. A corner kick finding the head of Breen, who couldn't do enough to grab his second goal. Chances would continue to come and go for the home side throughout the half, with a big one falling for Aidan Smith towards the end, who just lacked a bit of composure as it ended 1-0 to the home side. Our both have enjoyed an upturn in form in recent weeks, but it was Cali applying the early pressure at Gayfield, with a big save from Aidan McAdams required to keep out Paul Allen. 
and the Arbroath stopper would have to produce similar heroics shortly after. This time it was Billy Mackay who was denied by McAdams. The early pressure was relentless from Cali Thistle and the away team would again go close to making it 1-0. Louis Longstaff with a chance, this time kept out by the post. The away team continued to ramp up the heat in the second half, with our broth defender Keith Watson being booked in the 55th minute for a pullback on Charlie Riley. But despite being under the cosh for large periods of the game, it would be our broth who would strike the first blow, as Gavin Riley curled home the opening goal in the 67th minute. and the home team would continue to battle late into the game, with defender Watson being sent off for a second bookable offence in added time. But are both there enough to claim all three points? Let's check in on the latest standings in William Hill League One. Kelty Hearts are on top after their 5-1 demolition at Palmerston Park. Just five points separates places 2nd to 9th in an incredibly tight division, while Dumbarton sit 10th, still yet to register a league win this season. Uh, thankfully, nothing's come of it, but a bizarre bit of possession in defence there. Flash gets the flick on, then knocked on by Troughton. Is it going to break for Todd? Penalty! Greg Allen it was who gave it away, sent off for his troubles. Alan Troughton. What a nice five! Mr. Reliable from the penalty spot. It's 11th goal of the season. Healy's delivery knocked away. Miller lost it back into the area. Todd gets the flick, Troughton first time, Fash, he's gone a bit wide, ah, he just couldn't get it on target. The, oh, bit of a slice to tender a clearance, and it's a decent chance. Corner comes in, Troughton's the back point. Yeah! The second hat trick of the season, and that surely seals the three points. Intercepted by Todd, who could release Fash. Poor first touch, it's taken him a bit wide. He lays it off though. Todd blocked, gets another goal. Oh, goal. Effort came off the bar, let's bounce back in off Tom Ritchie, an own goal for the keeper. What a f. Surely going to go down as an own goal, but no doubt he'll let climb on that one and just wriggle through the grass with Tom Ritchie. Two of League Two's high flyers faced off at Balmour, with the home team applying the early pressure as Peter Pollitt forced a smart stop from Alistair Glavin. After a run of three draws in a row, Elgin hoped to turn consistency into victory on Saturday and took the lead on 42 minutes through a smart header from Jake Dolzanski. The second half would see the home side fight hard for a way back into the game. Rory McAllister just unable to keep this header down. McAllister would continue to be the primary goal threat for the Blue Toon and had an even better chance to score soon enough but Glavin did well to narrow the angle. Peter Head piled on the pressure late into the game, with Jason Brown being denied a crucial equalising goal by great goalkeeping from Glavin, as Elgin held on to claim the points on the road. Um, fortnight after that, we've got a busy week, sorry, a week after that, we've got a busy weekend with Peter Head at home on the Saturday, yeah. and then testimonial for... That's good. Grant Gallagher and Scott Robertson. Here's oh, Russell running it. through the middle. 
Hits it. It's a goal. Oh, Mark Russell, what a lovely goal, Mark Russell. Beautiful, my son. Ten minutes in, Mark Russell. Good. Now that breaks nicely for Dunlop. lop. He's Don't playing shy. Guthrie in, Guthrie's on side. Not got a lot in support as he no. turns. Oh. And he, along the deck. And it comes, yeah. pass comes out, punches. Now we need this followed out with the defence yeah. here. Cummins goes in, it's still loose. And I'll oh, tell you what, that a was save. a top draw save yeah. by Jacob Pazikas. Now, Jarvis to Jones. Mm. Oh, Jones plays Quinn Mitchell in. Oh, and dear. that is a very easy goal to concede again, Brian. Our old faults come back to haunt us. That was just uh, the runner wasn't followed, Lawrence, I'm afraid nope. to say it. It's now, it needs to come back in. Matty Grant will chase that. He's still in there. He needs to lift it back in. Oh, must be. And it's in! It's a goal for St. Rara! won the points, Lawrence. St. Rara won the points. 93rd minute of the game. Forfer's journey to fourth bank was made worthwhile after just 15 minutes when the away side were awarded a penalty kick by referee Alex Shepard, with Sterling's Bailey Dahl being shown a yellow card. Brad Rodden was on spot kick duties, and wrong-footed Derek Gaston to score his first four for goal. <laughs> but the Beanos wouldn't take too long to respond. 29 minutes gone, when a well-taken corner kick was turned home by defender Eric Shula for 1-1. And the home team would go on to overturn the deficit soon enough. Cooper Knox picking out Ricky Wall in 34 minutes, who finished it off to put Sterling in front. Forfer would look to hit back quickly and almost equalised after neat play from the left. Ross McLean getting on the end of a cross but narrowly poking wide. In a competitive second half, Sterling would be reduced to 10 men on 66 minutes, as defender Dow was sent off after being shown his second yellow card of the afternoon. Despite being a man light, Sterling created the best chance of the second period with Josh Kerr's header being well kept out by Mark McCallum, as it ended 2-1 to the home side. Clyde are still yet to really find their feet this season, but the Bully Wee started well against Spartans, and almost went one up when Jordan Allen forced a good save from Blair Carswell. But it was Spartans who struck the first blow at New Douglas Park in the 34th minute, as Mark Stow powered home his first goal for his new club. Chances came and went at both ends throughout the first period, with Clyde almost drawing themselves level when Paul Mackay saw a header tipped narrowly over the top but the Bully Wee would eventually find that all-important leveller just beyond the hour mark. Martin Rennie's low-driven effort making it 1-1 in the 62nd minute. In a game which could have gone either way, Clyde created the better of the chances, with Craig Howie's header almost claiming all three points, but it ended all square at New Douglas Park. Now for an updated look at the William Hill League 2 table. East Fife are four clear at the top after their 5-0 thrashing of Bonnie Rig Rose. Elgin City leapfrog Peterhead into second after their win at Balmour, while Stranraer's win in the capital moves the Blues up to seventh.